Hello and thank you very much for coming along to this sacred space. It's always wonderful when people come together uh, to share something. And what I'd like to share is the privilege I've had of being a musician throughout my life and what that feels like. The, the exalted feelings you have when you're playing and you're actually soloing. And this is something that, well, perhaps you could apply to your own lives, the uh, concept of improvisation. I'll start with my father. Every morning before he went to work, he would put on a classic jazz solo. The one I remember in particular is Coleman Hawkins' Body and Soul, a watershed recording in jazz. He'd then stand in the middle of the room like this. He closed his eyes, raised his head, and go, ah, oh, ah. Oh. <laughs> Eugene Henry Gosfield, beautiful man. Uh, I learned so much from that. Well, first of all, I was hearing the music. I was absorbing music as a child absorbs any language. But I was also learning the lesson that music can make you feel that way, that it has a beauty, a logic, that it can express a feeling from one person to another. And my mother also took me to every variety of, of music. John Cage, Sunhouse, John Coltrane. I saw all these people when I was young, and I think it's very important to see music live, a transmission actually happens. I got into the blues. Uh, that was my first musical passion, and I went to Chicago and I became a chauffeur for a man named Big Joe Williams. Big Joe Williams, he wrote Baby Please Don't Go. He was one of the last itinerant Delta Blues men, and that was my job, was to drive him to like fried chicken and wine parties. <laughs> uh, and he was a secretive man. He played a nine string guitar because he didn't want anyone else to steal his music, his licks. But at that time, I was playing guitar, but I never thought to ask this incredible link to the past, how do you do it? Or to pick up his guitar when he was flirting with some lady at one of these rent parties. Because at that time, I thought the process of learning music was a kind of magical thing. You just imbibed it, and to copy someone else was, was kind of cheating. It was cheating, cheating on your own individuality. Well, I went to university briefly, but that all ended when I co-founded a band called Asleep at the Wheel, and we squatted on a property in West Virginia and started playing music for the, the local hillbillies. Hippies and hillbillies, interesting story to be continued some other time. But I went to get a lesson from this man named the West Virginia Creeper. <laughs> Everyone in my life has names like this. I was very surprised when I went to his house and we sat down in his practice room and he put on a record and he put the needle down in the groove and by that time I was playing this in crazy instrument, the pedal steel guitar, for God knows what reason, and uh, he would copy the steel part, what the person was playing there. And I was, so you're allowed to do that? And, and a light bulb went off. From then on, I was in the practice room with what other, ever other animals were there, practicing eight hours a day, every day, learning every steel guitar lick, every saxophone lick I could transpose to steel guitar, learning a musical language. So it wasn't, it's not about a, a magical absorption, it's about actually getting down and learning the nuts and bolts. So, my next experience was at a place called the Palomino Club, a, a great country joint, former working man's bar in West Hollywood. We were playing with one of my favorite musicians, a man named Johnny Gimble. And Johnny, he just plays these beautiful solos. Your heart just melts. We're playing two sets. The second set, we play this instrumental called Jimmy's Jump, and I play the same solo I played the first set because I learned it from this great steel guitarist. Johnny just looks at me and he goes, 
why do you want to play the same thing twice? <laughs> Life is short. There are so many different <laughs> pathways that, that you can go down and explore things. And from that moment on, I never played the same solo twice, for good or bad, you know? Always coming from a different, different entry point. When you get into a solo, the idea is not to think. The idea is to surrender yourself to the musical flow, like what happens during any peak experience in life. Uh, the second worst thing you can do in a solo is to go, oh man, I'm really not cutting it. I gotta get in and practice. The worst thing you can do is to go, hey, it's really happening here. <laughs> hey, I'm pretty good. Because that's when you lose it. You have to be out of the conscious mind. People talk about being a vessel of song, but it's more complicated than that. You're also playing with other people. You have conventions. You know, you're probably following a series of chords. So it's improvised, but it's not totally free. You have these conventions that you follow in, in order for it, for it to happen. The, the other thing, you can learn from the masters and become a very great, well-rounded player. But at some point, it's great to find out what you do well. And often, this takes a musical imagination. You've got to imagine a sound that's never been heard before and persist in it until, until you've brought it to the world. You've also got to respect the things that come easily to you and play those. Miles Davis said something very profound to the musicians in his band. He said, play what you hear, not what you know. And what he meant was, fine, go. it's necessary to practice, to learn the basics, to know how to play in time. But when you're on the bandstand, play what you hear. It's music. It's sound. It's not theoretical. You leave all the theory behind. It's like regained innocence. You regain your childhood. And you're, you're in that state of, well, sometimes, sometimes it's blissful when, when you follow that. As an audience, or as anyone listening to music, there's always a temptation to classify. We're classifying animals. We put things in categories. That's blues. Uh, that's classical. That's country. Oh, good technique. Uh, that's a sad song. Oh, I heard that when I broke up with my girlfriend. What I'd like to do now, as I welcome Dave Brewer to the stage, uh, please give him a hand. Yeah. Yeah. What I'd like to do now is ask you to listen to music in that spirit. You, know, you may have thoughts about, oh, that's that, or that's that. But what I'm trying to express is soul. Soul is the, the hidden ingredient. There are, there are a couple things. I want to tell you a story. I'll tell that as any art form tells a story with light and shade, color, uh, balance, all the different elements, shape. But also, I want to express soul. I want to tell you what it's like to be a human being uh, with all the joys and sorrows that, in, that entails and maybe reach, reach a deeper kind of emotion. And of course, I want to play something that's never, never been played before. So, but we've got a little bit of a structure. This is a song of mine called In the Stillness of the Night. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Thank you, Dave.